Thank you, Lord. Dear saints, we've arrived at the conclusion of the book of Hebrews, chapters 20. The title is The Author and Perfecter of Our Faith. Amen. The Lord Jesus is the author and perfecter of our faith. Amen. This message, we focus on the word faith. So we really need to have a clear understanding of this word faith. The Bible says in Hebrews 11.1, 1, which says, Now faith is the substantiation of the things hoped for, the conviction of the things not seen. What is faith? Faith is a substantiation of things hoped for. So faith, actually, it is our sixth sense. We have the five senses as a general sense. If we want to know the taste, then we need to use our tongue in our mouths to taste. However, the, the five senses cannot touch the things relating to the spirit. So we need the sixth sense, which is faith. Faith can substantiate all the things of God, all the, all the spiritual things of the churches. Since the spiritual things you cannot see, it substantiates the things that you cannot see, changing it to be something that we can see within us. Praise the Lord. So in relation to faith, the Bible also speaks in Matthew 17.20, which says, For truly I say to you, if you have faith like a mustard seed, this mustard seed is very small. If you have faith like this small mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there. And it will move. It will move. And nothing will be impossible to you. What is the meaning of this verse? Some places in the four gospel says, you can tell the mountain, you can instruct the mountain to move into the sea. You can do this. The Lord says, you only need faith, which is like a mustard seed, very small. You can still move the mountains. Lord Jesus, there are some who takes the Bible literally, <laughs> to move things, move objects, and that is not the truth. But what it means in this verse is showing us that we actually, me and you, we don't have faith. Only the faith, which is in the Lord Jesus, who can command, who can instruct the mountain. So we really have to understand the meaning of faith. Many Christians are utilizing the word faith in an incorrect way. Having faith at something that you would like to have faith into. I feel like I want to have faith in this. So then I will command just like the Bible says this. If you do this, then everyone will say, may all the gold and the money in the world come into my pocket. So... In some ways, this might backfire. So we need to understand that the Lord is speaking in this way that us sinners, even believers, we actually have very little faith. We don't have enough faith. This faith is in Christ Jesus. So in the Bible, there is one verse. Romans 3, 22. Even the righteousness of God through the faith of Jesus Christ to all those who believe, for there is no distinction. This is through the faith of Christ Jesus to all those who believe. This faith is in Christ Jesus, not our own. It is the faith of Christ Jesus. We ourselves do not have faith. This faith is in Christ Jesus. So we really have to realize and be clear in this. Hebrews 12, 2. Looking away unto Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. This faith 
is we need to look away and to the Lord Jesus, turn away from everything else and look to the Lord Jesus. And this one will be the author, will come in, become the author and perfecter of our faith. Amen. Lord Jesus. So in the outline of this message starts from Roman numeral one. It says we need to look away unto Jesus with an undivided attention. So Roman number two says Jesus is the author of faith, the originator, the inaugurator, the source, and the cause of faith. So the source, what is the source of faith? The source of faith is our appreciation of Christ. Our appreciation of Christ. Dear saints, how do we appreciate Christ? It's not just by standing still or doing nothing. We can appreciate Christ. Romans 10, 17 says very clearly here. So faith comes out of hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Dear saints, our faith comes out of hearing. Someone spoke to us. Someone preached the gospel to us to speak about the story of the Lord Jesus so we can hear, we can, we can focus, and we can hear. Once we hear, then thank you, Lord, the things that follow is that we will appreciate Christ, appreciate the Christ that was spoken to us. It is very much like a diamond seller. A diamond seller, especially for a professional seller, he will actually use an eyepiece to look at the diamond to see that it's perfect, it's without blemish, and describe the beauty. And in this description will be, we will see and we will appreciate this diamond. And once we appreciate this diamond, then we will buy this diamond. This is the way how the, the diamond market works. But Christ is exactly the same. When someone comes to us and speak about the Lord and preach about the Lord, proclaim the, about the Lord, giving a description, shining a light, giving us revelation, then we appreciate Christ. It is not just persuasion. It is very much appreciation. It needs to come out of our appreciation first. This is further revealed in the life studies of Galatians, which talks about the first point, we need to listen. Second, we need to appreciate. Once we appreciate Christ, then we will call upon his name. Once we appreciate Christ, we will call, Oh, Lord Jesus. Once we call upon his name, then he will enter into our being. We will receive him. That is in the fourth point. So the fifth point, we will confess. So Romans 10, 9, which says that we confess our, with our mouth, Jesus as Lord. We need to confess. So six is we need to be joined. Our believing to him is we're joined to him. Seventh point is that we have this part. We participate in him. And then ninth, what follows, we will flow him out. We will rejoice. We will enjoy and we will rejoice thank you and praise him, then he will flow out. Thank you and praise the Lord. So this really, really allows us to see that faith is not coming out from ourselves, but Christ is the source. He is the originator, the inaugurator of our faith. So for us to have this faith, we need to turn away from everything else. If we do not turn away from other thing else, if our mind is filled with science, with um, tradition, culture, religion, then we can't receive any of this. We can't hear anything. Then there is no appreciation. Then we can't receive. We cannot call upon his name. We will not be saved. Amen. And we will not be made righteous as well. O Lord Jesus, praise the Lord. So, our natural man, we have no believing ability. This is number two, A2. Three, the faith by which we are saved is the precious faith. Amen. I'd like to stress a little bit on this point, the preciousness. In the book of First Peter, which talks about the five preciousness of Christ, the first preciousness of Christ is faith. Why is faith very precious? Because pre faith is 
Christ himself. Christ is the most precious one. We, we can see this preciousness in Christ. This preciousness is Christ himself. This is the first preciousness in First Peter. First and second Peter. So here we see faith is the highest um, preciousness, which is Second Peter one one. So we have after faith, then we have His blood. First Peter two nineteen. His blood is precious. Once we believe in the Lord Jesus, then His blood comes to us. He will. Wash our sins, wash our conscience. We would be forgiven of our sins, washed from our sins by His blood, which is precious. More precious than money. More precious than any treasure. Washes our sins. Once we experience Him, the third preciousness, and we will receive the promise, right? Second Peter one four. Once we are released from all our entanglements of the world, we will receive this great promise. He has given us the great promise, so that we will be released from corruption and the lust in the world and. The last preciousness in his promise is that his we receive his nature. And then this promise becomes a covenant. And then after um, we receive the covenant, then it also um, continues to become a testament. And after a testament, it becomes our inheritance. So, 1 Peter 1.7, there's a... There's a test in First Peter. This this faith is more precious than gold. This faith, which is more precious than gold, it's not. It's not in any literal translation, but it is the test. It's in the test. Once we receive this wonderful, precious promise. To be rid of the world, the lust and corruption, and we would have His nature for us to be released from all the corruptions and the lust in the world. We do need this test. It is very much similar to the melting and the forming of gold. So our faith is like gold. We need to have one hundred percent purity gold. But most of the time, we are not like that, so we need the Lord's trial, using fire to purify us, to cause us to be pure to Him without anything else, no mixture. So this, we should not think that um, testing or trials is not a good thing. It is actually pre- very precious. Many of us want just gold or treasure. But our blessing comes from our trials. If we do not pass through trials, we will not receive anything. So we will be transformed into gold, pearl, and precious stones, which is very precious in God's eyes. We need to pass through the trials, and、um, actually, all these things comes from the earth, from from just earth. After heat, you know, the precious stones will transform. So these are the four precious things. The fifth preciousness is First Peter two four, which is the stone, a precious stone. The Lord will make us stones. Not only that He is the precious stone, we are also precious stones. This five preciousness. First is the preciousness of faith. Second is the preciousness of the blood. Third is the precious promise. Then the precious trials, fifth. Then it is the precious stones. This is a transformation for the building up of the new Jerusalem to fulfill God's eternal purpose. So praise Him for this five preciousness that He has given to us. So now we come back to faith. 
Faith is also such a precious faith. We should not lose our faith. If we lose our faith, and the Bible says that it is like uh, a boat sinking in the ocean. So Hebrews 11.6 says that 11.6, if you do not have faith, without faith it is impossible to be well-pleasing to him. For he who comes forward to God, we must believe that he is and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. They're saying, see, we don't have um, faith, then we will fall. If we don't have faith, then it is almost very much as if we are sinking. This faith is on Christ himself. If we have Christ and we're one with him, we will not be lost. We will not sink, and we will not fall, and we will be holy, more holy every day. So that is like gold, being made holy day by day, and being those who are sanctified. If we are not sanctified, we cannot meet Him. If we want to meet, we want to meet God. We need to be sanctified. Amen. We also need to believe that He is. Not only just with faith, but our faith is to believe that he is. This, this verb is, the verb to be, in Exodus 3, 14, which Jehovah spoke to Moses, I am who I am. Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. So his name is I am. Jehovah means I am who I am. This am is a verb to be. He is everything. He is, he is here even before the foundation of the world. He is. He is like this. When we believe that he is, then we are not. If we want to be, then he won't be. So in our faith, we cannot be. We cannot be the I am. We cannot be more than him. This, If we are like this, then this is not faith. Our faith is to know that he is and I am not. We need to deny ourselves, to bear the cross, and to lose our soul life. Amen. So here we see Saul as the person who persecuted the Lord. Saul is very much like Saul, the, the king. He was himself. He became everything. If he wants to persecute anyone, he can be. So this Saul, he's the only one who is. God has no ground to be the I am in him. He's only in religion. Oh Lord Jesus, if we believe in the Lord then we will not be in religion. If we believe, some of us, if we believe, we would say, what religion are you? You will say, thank you, Lord, I am a Christian. I am in a religion of Christianity. But if you know him, you will say, I don't have I don't believe in religion. I believe in the Lord Jesus. Our Lord Jesus is great. He is the I am. He's the great I am. This is the Savior, Jehovah. Thank you, Lord. We believe in Christ today because Acts 4, 12. And there's, there is salvation in no other, for neither there is another name under heaven given among men in which we must be saved. So Jehovah is the I am who saves us. He becomes everything to be our salvation. This is the Lord Jesus. We need to believe in the Lord Jesus, believe who he is. If we say we believe in the I am, then we will call, oh, Lord Jesus. So we see the religionist in different religions will not see this. They will not let us call upon the name. What is religion? Those who are in religion. What is religion? Religion is 
to do so many things in enthusiasm, but without Christ. So much natural thing, so much tradition. This is religion. To be rid of religion, we need to call upon the name, Oh, Lord Jesus, then we will see the Lord. And once we have him, we will be out of religion. So for those who come to rebuke us in calling upon the name of the Lord and do not understand, then they are all in religion. Saul was the main person per to persecute those who call upon the name of the Lord. He will capture them. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, they will be persecuted and captured, and they will be killed. So we need to be rid of such religion. We need to be those who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. We need to know the I am, that this I am is everything to us. And Paul, once he is enlightened, when he was going to Damascus, the Lord says, I am Jesus. This is very important because this revelation that the Lord has spoken is, I am Jesus. Even at the beginning, Saul doesn't even know what Jesus is. So the Lord Jesus was very clear, I am Jesus. This meaning when he, he spoke is that I, the, I am the great I am. I am the person who was the I am and you are not. So then you cannot be. At the beginning, you were. You were the I am. But now I am. I will be this I am. So Saul repented. And Saul is removed. And Paul comes in instead. So Saul is the great. Paul is the very, the very small. So Paul is like a mustard seed. If we think that we're great, we need to be everything. Then what is he to us? We need to come from Saul into Paul. He would become everything to us. So the rest of Paul's life, Christ will become everything. Christ becomes everything. Paul only says, Christ is all and in all. And he also says, whether through life or through death, I would magnify Christ. Whether through life or through death, Christ will be magnified in my body. Philippians 1.20 and 21. Um, for me to live is Christ. Praise the Lord. This should be our Christian living. We need to believe who he is, what he is. If he is everything to us. In a verse, it says that John 8.24, which says that if you do not believe, then you will die in your sins. So we need to believe that he is, otherwise we'll die in our sins. So we all, the rest of our life, we need to believe that he is. So we would live by faith. Once we live, then he would be the righteous one in us. He will be the righteousness in us. And we will be those who live according to faith. Faith is the substantiation of the things unseen. We can substantiate the things that we cannot see. If we can see, then we don't have to have faith. If we have faith, then we will have faith in the things of God, which are unseen. A lot of believers believe that he is living and the heart has never changed and absolute that he is everything to us. So praise and thank the Lord. We need to believe in this thing. We need to believe in him that he is. And in this way, we will receive his blessing. Otherwise, we say we have faith, we have faith. It becomes superstition. It is not faith. So may this message reveal to us that the Lord Jesus Christ will be the author and perfecter of our faith. Amen. Today, we are in this way. We are striving and we are running the race to the new Jerusalem. So he needs to be the author and perfecter. In Romans eleven thirty six. 1136, this faith is coming out of him, through him, and to him. It is eventually all the faith is for him, for his glory. It's not for us. Some of us pray that, Lord, if I put my arms down and I hit my arms on the table and I confess, 
then the prayers for the sickness, the sickness will get better. A lot of them, even they put their hands down, they will continue to hit the table and keep on praying and praying and praying and then hit the table, demanding that the Lord will heal the sick. Maybe one time is not enough. Maybe he needs to hit more just so that the Lord will heal the sick. This is not the way for us to pray. The only way for us to pray for him to heal the sick is just for us to have faith. Before there is another person in Taiwan, um, there's a, a sister who leads any any large meetings to speak various language, and then she passed away. And then she, she says that uh, when this person passed away, uh, others were saying, "This the Lord is a resurrection life. We have faith. The Lord is going to raise her up. We're going to pray half a day. We don't have to bury her. We're just going to pray and pray and pray and pray. There's no resurrection. This kind of faith is very fatal because you cannot order God. It is not that God is originated. There's no origination from him. This is not faith. This is not right. So may we actually enter into this message to really understand and to apprehend what is faith. I don't have to really have time. So now we have faith in him. We need to have faith in who he is. He is God. He is also man. So we need to believe him in this way, have faith in him in this way. To, If we don't believe that he is God and he's man, then we will not be saved. For us to be saved, we need to believe that he is if you don't believe, then he will, you will die in your sins. If he is, when he was a man, he has a blood. He has blood and his blood cleanses us and his blood is efficacious for us. This is our faith. His position, we need to see his process. May the Lord have mercy to enlighten the eyes of our hearts to have the same faith, this faith in the Bible. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So I will continue from Brother Watson, the author and the perfecter of our faith. So the brother has spoken that according to this word, which comes from Hebrews 12, especially Hebrews 12, 2, which Paul says, looking away unto Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Dear saints, when Paul speaks in this way, it means that the author is the Lord Jesus, not us. It means that we ourselves do not have faith. It is like Paul. From Saul to Paul, Saul was without faith. Once he saved Galatians 2.20, this faith becomes this the faith of the Son of God. This faith is not originated from us. The more we see ourselves, the more we have no faith. Once we look in our own situation or circumstances, we will not have faith in them. It is like when the Lord was walking on the sea to see his disciples, when Peter was looking at the Lord Jesus and tell to the Lord that I can, I would like to walk to you. Once he looks into to the Lord, there's no problem. But once he looks on the outward situation, that he starts sinking. So the Lord was really much reminding him that he needs to have faith. So they're saying it means that for us to have faith in this, this faith is Christ himself. So in Hebrews 11, which says that without faith, it is impossible to be well-pleasing to him. When we speak it in this way, we, we can see, for example, Peter and John on the mountain of transfiguration. We can see that at the time, there is a revelation. And then Peter was like, okay, can I build the three tabernacles for the three prophets? And then the clouds cover the whole mountain, and there's a sound, the voice. It says, this is my beloved in him I have found my delight. It, it means that the father is very pleasing, was so pleased with the son. If we don't have this faith, we don't have the son of God, then we are not pleasing to God. Amen. So, dear saints, 
today our faith, the faith that Christians are talking about, even if it's just the example that Brother Watson has given, whether it is asking for money or to heal the sick or any miracles, these are all superstitious faith. In a way, it is, it's a hilarious faith. Faith that has no, no substantiation. But thank you, Lord, in the word which is given to us through Paul in Hebrews. This faith is Christ himself. Thank you, Lord. In 2 Corinthians 4, Paul says, We have the spirit of faith. All of us believers, we have the spirit of faith because we have Christ in our spirit. Christ dwells in our spirit. We have the regenerated spirit, which is the spirit of faith. Having the same spirit. Because I believe, therefore I speak. I spoke. Because I also believe, therefore I spoke. 4.14, it says, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will make us stand before him with you. Amen. So our faith is Christ himself who went through the process of death and resurrection to become the spirit into our being so that our spirit will be regenerated. In this way, there is a need for believers like us, believers. We like to use believers instead of Christians. The word Christians in the past, it's, it's a word that everyone looked down upon those who believe in Christ initially. But now we are believers. So believers like us, we have the spirit of faith. That is the mingled spirit between God, the process, God, triune God. And we need to have faith and speak the things that we have experienced. Our experience that we have to him, it needs to be in our spirit. It needs to be in the realm of the spirit. So the things that we speak today, the Lord needs to be our author, author and perfecter in the realm of the spirit. So now we enter into Roman numeral three, coming from Hebrews 12, 2a. Paul says, Jesus is the perfecter, the finisher, the completer of our faith. Dear saints, our faith needs to be finished and completed. Especially for 2 Corinthians 3.18, which Paul says that we need to turn, turn with an unveiled face. Unveiled face, beholding and reflecting like a mirror. This beholding of Christ, our reflecting of Christ, there needs to be no veil. The veil, those believers in Corinthians at the time, once they read the commandments of Moses, they still have a veil. They cannot see Christ through this veil. So in our reading of the Bible, there could be veils as well that we cannot find Christ. Do you see? In John 5, the Pharisees, they look, they seek the scriptures. They know that the Bible has eternal life, but the Lord says, you seek the scriptures, but you do not come to me to receive life. So in our reading, even reading the Bible in the spiritual things, we need to be without a veil. We need to have an unveiled face. We need to turn to behold, to see Christ who is in our spirit. So, dear saints, those, a person who is the author and perfecter of our faith is in our spirit. We need to learn to turn and look away from everything else that is not him. This does not mean that we don't read the Bible, of course, but it is while we're reading we would still turn to our spirit. Even though we read, we still need the mercy of him to reveal and that our heart would turn to the Lord Jesus to set our mind on the spirit so that Christ would be added in the spirit. And by the word, 
he will spread into us and saturate and permeate into us. He is an uh, the deep author. So we have in Hebrews 8, Paul spoke about the law. The law in the Old Testament is a commandment, but in the New Testament, the law is the law of the spirit of life. This is in the spirit. So in the commandment in the Old Testament is God's word. It's actually God's word. The problem is that Israelites, their heart, there's a problem. So if our heart does not turn to the spirit, does not behold on Christ, then when we read, there's still a veil. It is very much like Saul before he was saved. He clear, clearly read all the Bible and the scriptures, but because he is veiled and he cannot see Christ, until one day the Lord actually came to him. So in Acts 9, he was he he realized that he is not, and he would call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, who are you, Lord? So what does this mean? It means that the law of the spirit of life in the New Testament, especially through the word of God, once this instant word was spoken, it brings the faith, the eternal life that's in this faith would be added and dispensed into us and becomes our faith. This is why Rome 10, 17, Romans 10, 17, actually 12 and 13, it says, um, he is rich to all who call upon him. And 17 says that faith comes out of hearing as this hearing is through the word of Christ. We need to listen to the word of Christ. A lot of times we can hear a lot of the messages, but according to Hebrews 4.2, we need to bring bring our the word that we have heard to mix it with faith. Is like the Jewish people, when they entered into the wilderness, Moses has brought a lot of things that Jehovah has promised and spoke to all the Israelites. Millions of people heard it. But only Joshua and Caleb used this word and mixed it with faith. That's how they were able to possess the good land. So dear saints, for us to receive Christ, if we look at the outward situation, especially for the, the COVID virus, we might lose our job, we might have some um, financial problems or some sickness. These are all outward circumstances. The more we look at them, the more we have no faith. So may the Lord, may God have mercy on us that the only thing we need to do, we need to, th we thank you, Lord, that we have a lot of conference. We have every Saturday, we have um, healthy words and we have um, night pursuits, especially for all the working saints and the young people. And we have the reading the Bible, five, five chapters in the New Testament or um life studies in the Bible, revelation, life studies, all the things that we've re read and received, we need to bring all of them and mix them with our faith. We need to turn our heart to the Lord Jesus. So thank you, Lord, in the third Roman numeral. In C, it says that we all have the same faith in quality, but the quantity of faith. We actually have the same faith. We need to have the same spirit of faith. But the quantity of faith, we have depends upon how much we contact the living God. Amen. So that he may have, so that we may have him increased in us. So as we hear this word and we read this word, we need to learn to exercise our spirit to behold and to look to the Lord Jesus and not to our circumstances so that our faith will not decrease or will fall. So may the, may God have mercy on us. This faith is the triune God that has dispensed himself into us, becoming like an electricity to, as, as the electricity that comes with life to be dispensed into us. So in in B, it says, when we look away unto him, he ministers heaven, life, and strength to us. Dear saints, especially during this time on earth, there's nothing fun. There's nothing 
good for us to follow. If we look at the situation of the virus, so many people that is is dying. A lot, a lot of them are sick. The more we look at it, the more we don't have life. The less life we have, there's no supply. But once we spend some time in His Word to listen to His messages in the churches, in the conference, we receive the ministering of heaven, life, and strength to transfuse and infusing us with all that He is. So in all the messages, even though we're not together physically, we need to turn to our spirit. We need to look away to Christ, behold Him. Hebrews 12, 1 to 2, it which says, which Paul says, so that we would continue to run this race, run with endurance. So especially during this time, we we are limited right now. We are limited with so many things. We are running with endurance in the heavens and in the earth. What do we do? Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, Paul says very, very clearly, we need to look away unto Jesus. This is the first point. And then later on, we also have the, cl- the, the cloud of witnesses. This is according to the Old Testament in Exodus. This cloud is God's pres- presence as the Spirit. We have this cloud which dwells with his, with his people to lead his people. Nighttime, so the pillar of clouds. At the nighttime, we have we need the word, which is the pillar of fire. This pillar of fire is his word, especially appearing in the night. So we need both the pillars of cloud and the pl- pillars of fire. We need his presence in his word. And even more, we have the believers, the cloud of witnesses means that the church, the church which consists of all of the saints, especially in the meeting of the churches, there is God's presence. Not only we look away unto Jesus, we also follow his speaking through the churches. Amen. So, dear saints, there are so many leading from the churches especially in the work of Thailand, is also a part of the work of God in this whole world. There is a leading and there is his speaking. We not only have to personally pursue and exercise our spirit, we also need to follow the leading of the churches. Amen. So that we will run the race in the heavenly race together as we are on this earth. Amen. So, me... I will skip. So in in the third Roman numeral, E, the great irrepressible and unlimited power of faith. This faith is very powerful. The faith motivates thousands to suffer for the Lord, risk their lives, and become overcoming sent ones and martyrs for the carrying out of God's eternal economy, which is in faith. Dear saints, what is this faith? This faith is Christ himself being added, transfused, and infused into us. 20 years ago for me, I'll give you my testimony. So in 2002, I was making a decision to come to the training. A lot of my relatives who do not believe, they said, you can believe, but don't go be too superstitious. Go be too religious. But dear saints, especially in 1996, I went to visit Taiwan with some of the young people around 40 days. We see the pattern of the training center in Taiwan. We see there is a speaking, there's God's presence and speaking. I feel attracted. We all are attracted. This faith, we, f- we realize it's a precious faith in Second Peter, in his word. We see the preciousness being attracted. Other people might not see this preciousness, but we see this preciousness. So that time I made a decision to go to the tr- full-time training. 
What is the meaning of this? The meaning is that we don't only pursue personally. We need to follow the churches, the leading in the body. So thank you, Lord. This is the power that is irrepressible and unlimited power. There are so many people who would like to hold us back, to obstruct us, even with a good heart. However, the more we listen to them, the more we have little faith. So may God have mercy on us in the reference in the Bible from Hebrews 11, 36 to 40, which talks about the testimony in the Old Testament. So in the Old Testament, all of those believers are the testimonies in faith. They cannot complete God's economy, only us as the current age believers. In Luke, so there's a Christian cult which is teaching that the Lord Jesus is coming as a female. This is a teaching of a cult, but the Lord says that for the Son of Man who will come back, which is the Lord himself, he will see faith. He would come to witness faith. When the Lord comes back and he would find faith on earth, this faith, especially for Hebrews 12, 1 to 2, those who are the testimony are the believers who have faith in Christ. This is an example. Philippians 2, 30. If we look in verse 25, from then onward, Paul was speaking about his fellow worker, Epaphroditus. Epaphroditus is willing to risk his life, to give his life. Paul spoke that he was risking his life for the church, for the saints in Philippians. So he is willing to risk his life. If you look... In Philippians 2.30 footnotes, risking is venturing, recklessly exposing his life, like a gambler. So it's like those who are a gambler, you can say, I would gamble my life. So Epaphroditus is the pattern of faith. He does not believe in superstition faith, but he is willing to risk his life for the saints and for the church. So in Romans 16, Romans 16, 3 to 4, this speaks of Priscilla and Aquila. They moved to the locality. In the last chapter in Romans, speaking about the, the local churches and the believers in the churches, Priscilla and Aquila opened their homes in Rome. They're actually opening their home within the authority of Caesar. If you look in the history, Caesar in Rome, he's actually pretty vicious in a way of executing people. Caesar is very, very vicious. So I don't really, I can't imagine how much they're risking their life. But Paul says that they risk their necks. They're risking their lives, not just because Rome, according to the Proverbs before, or the words before, Rome is the center of the world in all the transactions for careers and work. That's not the way they're risking their life. But if you read um, Romans 16, 3 to 4, they're risking their own necks for Christ and the church the churches, and the Gentiles. They are risking their lives for the saints and for the churches. This faith causes us to have power, a power that we are willing to risk our life for the church and for the saints. This is the example of Paul. Paul spoke in Acts 20. He is willing to be martyred in Jerusalem. He says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the course. So he has finished the course. He does not look at his life as preciousness. He is in Ephesus and he's risking his life for the churches there to speak the words of grace, to bring in the revelation to the saints. And what did Paul do in Acts 20? 
it shows that he's still working. He's been working not only for himself, but also for those who are serving with him. They're saying this might be uh, opposite of what we think. A lot of our thoughts is that now I'm working in the world, I'm still not doing really well, then I'm just going to go serve. So I'll just um, not have to work. This kind of thought is very much relating to religious. Thai people would say it is like a person living in the temple. So just by going into the temple, someone will just give you food. So may the Lord have such mercy to us that the faith that is in the Bible, Paul is our pattern. Hebrews 12. Hebrews is actually the book that is before the second Timothy, which Paul wrote in the same year. He was ready to be murdered. That's why he is encouraging us to run this race and by looking at the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Today, in the outward situation, even in the situation of the COVID virus or the society or the country or the economy, there's nothing good for us. May the Lord have mercy on us that once he comes back, thank you, Lord, we will all will take part in his coming back. And when he comes back, he will see this testimony on the earth. May God have mercy on all of us. So I have a bit of time left. So the last part of the outline, which Paul speaks about the regenerating spirit, which is our spirit of faith is a victory that overcomes the Satan organized and usurped world. The world has been usurped by Satan in John in 1 John, this system of Satan in Greek, it's cosmos. Today in the world, we use this word as cosmetic, coming from the word cosmos. So they're saying all of the sisters, all of the females likes to put on makeup, to put on their cosmetic. This is usurped by Satan. So the, all the sisters while you're working or coming out of the house, how long does it take for you to do your makeup? In While you are doing your makeup, do you ever thought of 2 Corinthians 3.18 where I should be beholding and reflecting the Lord? And this was usurped by Satan. Romans 12, 1-3. Paul says that you need to offer yourself, right? to be a living sacrifice that's well-pleasing to God and do not be fashioned according to this age. This age is the world. The world has the age and this age, it is the system of Satan who is usurping, taking our time, taking our heart away from God. And we would not know his will. Because of this, the regeneration, the regenerated spirit in 1 John 5, 4, is the spirit of faith that is victorious and overcomes the world. We need to exercise our spirit. The believers, we have a spirit of faith, which is the same. So what we need to do in 3, sorry, 2, C2, the way to receive such a faith is to contact its source, the Lord, the process, and consummate God by calling on his name, praying to him, and pray reading his word. So dear saints, especially during this time, what are we doing at home? Amen. We call on his name. Exercise our spirit. Amen. Pray. Especially during this time, there's a prayer for the whole world, especially on, on Saturday. Some locality has it on Friday. A prayer is really for us to contact him, who is the author and perfecter of our faith. Not only that, we need to pray read his word. Because in Ephesians 6, our battling, our warfare with the enemy 
which is Satan, the weapons, which, which is a spiritual weapon, is in the Bible by prayer, pray reading, and petition. So the churches we have in our leading, we have、um, burdens for you to pray specifically in the word. And once we pray read this word, we will be able to battle in the spiritual warfare that is living the life of faith that we can go forward without any obstacle. This is the power that continues to push us forward, allowing us to suffer for Him. Before Saturday is a day of warfare. A lot of things feel like、oh, I've been working for a whole week. Saturday is my break day, but then the church. Makes us to have meetings whole day in the morning at ten o'clock. We have prayer both for the brothers and sisters. We would、um, kneel down and pray, and then afternoon. Then we have the words, the healthy words, the meeting, and then evening. We also have the the meeting. If we look at the circumstances and do not call upon His name, we don't pray. We don't pray read His word. We have no power. We have no faith. So our faith in this way. Thank you, Lord. We believe that there is His presence, there is His speaking, there is His prayer, so that it will supply us and to empower us to allow us to run the race, the heavenly race on earth. This is the testimony that He wants and He desires. It is in the faith which is on this earth among all of the saints who has the faith in the churches in the recovery. This is for us to behold, to look. At the author and the perfecter of our faith, not just in not in, just in our spirit, but there is also through the leading of the church. Thank you, Lord. This is our practical way during this time for us to redeem the time to look to the Lord, to behold Him, so that we would reflect, to be transformed, to be like Him from glory to glory. Not only that we will listen, we will have to practice by faith, so that our faith would increase more and more. Thank you, Lord. So when He comes back, He will see such faith in His believers. Amen.